rotary cutters, slashers, choppers, brushers, bush hogs, brush hogs, mowers, whatever you want to call it, that's what we're going to compare today. Frontier versus Dirt Dog, OEM versus Aftermarket. Does one give you more bang for the buck? We're going to inform you, let you make your own decision. Let's get started now. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you are feeling tippy on your tractor, adding wheel spacers can make a big difference. Bora Spacers are made in America. They have a lifetime warranty. If you'd like to get more information, we'll put a link down below on where you can buy them. Alrighty, you know I'm a big fan of flail mowers, so if you are trying to decide between a bush hog, brush hog, whatever, and a flail mower, check out this video right up here. We'll tell you all about it. And now before we get to the nitty gritty on these guys, let's give you a few pointers to step up your brush hog game and set you up for success. All right, so first things first, these are brush hogs. These are field mowers. These are not designed to mow your lawn. They're gonna do a terrible job at that unless you just absolutely don't care about it. So if you're looking for a multi-purpose unit, this is not the way to go. You may wanna consider a flail mower if you want kind of an all-in-one that can do your lawn and your field, but think of these as rough cut mowers. All right, a big decision you have to make is shear bolt versus slip clutch. I've got my own opinion on that, my own philosophy. A lot of other guys do too, and it's gonna depend on your circumstances. For me, if I'm mowing the same piece of ground year after year, take our new property, for example. Last year, this was a wild overgrown field, but after you get it under control, you're very familiar with the ground. So a shear bolt is gonna be cheaper than a slip clutch. Um, but you do have the potential to have to replace those shear bolts over and over if you're hitting a lot of obstacles, a lot of really hard you know, stumps or boulders or something else that's hidden in the weeds, whereas a slip clutch is gonna do what the name suggests and allow that to, to slip, that gearbox to slide over the stump or over the boulder, whatever it is, and keep on going. You're gonna have less downtime with the slip clutch, but you're gonna pay a premium. So if you're mowing the same piece of ground like we're gonna be doing out here year after year, several times a year, you're gonna be very familiar with it. It's gonna be under control, it's gonna be managed. You can either mark or remove those hidden obstacles that could shear a bolt, and you could save some money and go this route, or if you're gonna be mowing a lot of different properties, maybe you're doing it commercially or always in new areas as you're developing something, that could be one that's beneficial to have a slip clutch. Okay, another decision you have to make is if you want solid guards or chain guards. And so solid could be steel or rubber, Rubber. chain guards are going to be an upgrade that typically costs several hundred dollars more at least if you have a really big brush hog bush hog it's going to cost you a lot more than that as well the trade-off okay so cheaper cost for the solid guards they're going to hold more material underneath so if you have say a you know a four inch rock that's underneath there it's potentially going to hit the blades a couple more times before you kind of drive along whereas on the chain guards it's going to be more likely to allow that rock to release now the chains will slow it down as it exits from the brush hog but it's not going to trap it under there so it's going to minimize the wear um, potentially let things get chopped up a little bit better as well as you don't have so much debris that's constantly clogged up underneath there. Now, all that said, I have done a ton of brush hogging with both kinds of setups. I haven't really found an experience for me where this has mattered a whole lot either way. I think the chains are nice to have, but they're an expensive upgrade. Okay, so common question, how do you select the right width of a brush hog to match your tractor? Well, as you're gonna see in this scenario, the width of the cutter essentially matches up within an inch or two of the width of the outside of the rear tires on the tractor. That is typically how it's going to work out. Sometimes you can go a little bit bigger. You really don't wanna go any narrower if you can avoid it because it's nice to be able to cover your tracks. But that's not the only consideration you do have to watch your horsepower so it's going to be your engine horsepower and then you lose some that comes to your rear pto output as well this is a 25 horsepower tractor this one over here is 32 horsepower they're the same family the same series both the john deere 3e i would run a five foot or a 60 inch brush hog on either one and be just fine with it but speaking of that 25 horsepower 3025e this is a totally different story than say my 1025r which is going to still be a 25 horsepower engine but it's not going to have the lift capacity on the three point hitch to to lift up this whole brush hog especially when your your uh, your, your center of mass is way out here it's just going to be too much for that tractor the tractor itself is too light so it's going to really throw it around a lot so there's three things you want to consider the width of the tractor the three-point lift capacity and the horsepower all right you want to watch your heat and i mean that in a couple of ways number one we overheated in this field right here just a few feet away last summer and we made a mistake and trying to get our tractor to cool down and recover. We turned our tractor all the way off. It is better 
for that cooling system to keep running, okay? So throttle down to that idle, keep your tractor running, let that temperature gauge get back and recover, check all your screens around your radiator, your engine guard, your grill. Those really have a tendency to clog up in the summertime with all the pollen and dust and everything else that's floating around. Now, the other way to protect yourself from the heat is with one of these, a rhino hide canopy. Now, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag here. We'll do a whole video on this later, but we actually, my brother and I bought rhino hide. So, we own this company now, all right? We've got a brand new website coming out. We're gonna improve a lot of things, but this is a great canopy. That's one thing that does need improvement. This thing is nearly indestructible. It's super lightweight. One person can take it on and off for storage, transport, whatever you need to do, but it's gonna protect you from that summer sun, make life a lot more enjoyable. If it's tractors, zero turns, all sorts of stuff with the Rops bar on it. And lastly, well, I guess maybe a few exceptions here and there, but what we see right here are gonna be quick hitch compatible, PTO link compatible. So if you really struggle or you hate connecting, disconnecting attachments from your three point hitch, these can be a real pain to get all three different arms hooked up to them. You get a quick hitch, it makes the process way easier to attach all three of those points. You get a PTO link, it's gonna push out your connection point for the, the tractor PTO splines on there, make it a lot easier to access a different location. We have all sorts of information about those in other videos that we cover too, but now it's time to to compare OEM versus aftermarket. I'm gonna give you the rundown of everything I know. So the first thing I wanna point out is a PTO shaft cradle. So you're gonna have one on either side of the dirt dog. The Frontier will have a PTO shaft cradle on one side. Both units are gonna have a shear bolt as the standard drive line protection with a slip clutch upgrade available. Your bare bones protection on the front and the rear guards, you are gonna have a rubber guard on the front a steel guard on the back of the dirt dog. I know that you can buy this without any guards on the frontier. Typically you're not going to though. You'll get a, a rubber up front and a steel in the back or maybe you'll get chain guards here. Right now dirt dog doesn't offer a chain guard upgrade. I do believe that's in the works for some time in the future. So as we discussed earlier that may or may not be important to you and let that guide your decision. Okay, if we take a look along these edges, right along here, right along here, the difference is going to be this is a welded on edge on the frontier. You're going to have a replaceable skid runner right along the edge of the dirt dog, okay? So you're gonna get potentially more life out of your overall brush hog without having to weld something new on this way. So I spent a lot of time brush hogging. I've used a lot of these Frontier rotary cutters. They do a really good job. So I'm not putting them down at all. This is obviously a used unit that we got in versus a brand new unit. So don't let the paint fading, that kind of thing um, bother you too much. This is not meant to be derogatory towards Frontier. They're both good cutters, just pointing out the differences. Okay, so let's talk about these top decks on here. And as you're gonna see, this is pretty common uh, for an older rotary cutter that's been sitting outside. You're gonna see a lot of the corrosion, a lot of the paint wear, a lot of the staining, um, rust just starting to happen all around, and that's because water tends to pool on these decks. You get a lot of leaves on there, grass clippings, whatever else, and if you don't clean it off, it sits on there and just piles up. So Dirt Dog wanted to improve on that design, and it may be hard to see to the naked eye, but there is a domed effect running front to back on here to allow that water to drain off and not sit and collect and pool in different areas and cause the problems that you see on most rotary cutters. Now, in addition to that, you're gonna notice a different design detail where Dirt Dog ran the top plate across over the edge of the side plate where it's a little bit different on the frontier. So the reason they did this is to prevent any additional points where water could pool up, um, additional seams that are on here that are exposed to the sun and the elements. So everything is gonna be welded on the bottom, on the underside of the top plate on the dirt dog. Kind of keeps it out of the way, out of the elements. Doesn't allow for anything to pool up in these areas or uh, collect in there. Just makes a cleaner appearance all around. And I didn't even notice it until now, but right in the corner, okay? On the frontier, we'll show you that too, but there's a hole that goes right through here to allow the water to seep out and drain out, not pool and collect. So it's a lot of these little details that kind of all add up to make a big difference and just show that Dirt Dog really did put a lot of thought into trying to differentiate themselves from the rest of the market. Okay, so another small detail, but it just kind of goes to show you that Dirt Dog was really trying to think outside the box a little bit, you're gonna notice the pivot point, all right, or the flex point on the Frontier is gonna be up here, all right? So you're gonna have a little bit of a range of motion this way. So if you're going in a ditch and you're coming up the other side, well, your tractor's gonna to wanna to kind of bind up and sort of fold in on itself. This is what that pivot point's all about. 
And this could also come into play when you're attaching or detaching your attachment as well. And so Dirt Dog took that pivot point from up here and moved it all the way to the back of the brush hog so it's no longer a potential pinch point. And they also claim to have the largest range of motion with 23 degrees. So you can fold it in, move it back and forth. This top A-frame has a lot of flexibility there to contour with the ground, maintain more even contact. And if you're going up those hills or in ditches and that kind of thing, potentially prevent anything from happening with your your PTO shaft shortening too much and binding up, you're gonna have a lot of flexibility with this cutter. All right, so let's run through the big hitters on specs really quick. So this is a big one, in my opinion. Gauge of the steel used on the deck. On the frontier, you're gonna have an 11 gauge steel. The lower the number, the thicker the steel, by the way. So 11 gauge on the frontier, 10 gauge on the dirt dog. But if you get a 48 inch frontier, that's gonna be 12 gauge, so an even thinner material. An important one here, max cut size of your brush. The diameter of the brush that you can cut is one inch max over here on the frontier, 50% larger at one and a half inches max on the Dirt Dog. I have a feeling that ties into your blade tip speed. So on the 60 inch cutters that we're comparing, it is 14,335 feet per minute on the frontier versus 16,120 on the Dirt Dog. Okay, so you are gonna have a 65 horsepower rated gearbox on the Frontier with a 60 horsepower rated gearbox on the Dirt Dog, so the wind does go to Frontier. I will say, just to make the point, either one of these are gonna work with essentially any compact tractor that's out there. And if you are in that 55, 60, 65 horsepower range, you are probably gonna be in a 72 inch cutter, not a 60 inch, just pointing that out while I'm thinking about it. Okay, really good to see both of these have a 15 inch, I'm pretty sure it's identical, laminated tail wheel. You're gonna have seven adjustment positions on either one of these. Uh, Chris pointed out that the tube steel does look to be a little bit bigger on the Dirt Dog versus the Frontier, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. As far as weight goes, this is a bit of a tricky one. The Frontier is 590 pounds according to the specs that I found online versus 508 on the Dirt Dog. I can't figure out how it weighs more with a thinner gauge steel all around, so my thought is potentially that they are including the weight with the chain guards on the front and the back to get that additional weight on it, while of course the Dirt Dog right now does not have that chain guard option. Something I like to point out on any attachment that I sell when it is offered is the length of the warranty. I think that a longer warranty by a manufacturer is kind of a signal of the confidence and the quality of their product, the longevity, how long they expect it to last. So the Frontier gearbox does come with a one-year warranty on it. The Dirt Dog gearbox is gonna come with a three-year warranty on it. So where are these cutters made? I did a little looking around. You have a serial number plate on the gearbox as well as on the cutter itself. So the gearbox is gonna say made in China, which is where essentially every gearbox of retractor equipment seems to come out of. There is a sticker on the brush hog itself that says made in the US. Now over here in the Dirt Dog, they are a made in the US company, but they do use made in China gearboxes, again, like pretty much everything else. So they're gonna have a big old sticker on here that says made in the USA with US and imported parts. And that's what that means. When you have a major component like the gearbox that's sourced from outside the country, you technically need to mention that as made in the US if everything else is with US and foreign parts. Okay, so I went online, I did a little searching around. Uh, Mutton Power has a really good website where you can actually build one of these Frontier cutters right on there. So I priced it out to be equivalent to the setup on the Dirt Dog, so it's apples to apples, solid enclosures front and back, shear bolts on there, a local pickup price. You get all this extra stuff on the Dirt Dog for $50 cheaper if you're gonna compare a local pickup price. So a little bit more bang for the buck with the Dirt Dog. We used to carry these in green. We are switching to this gray color to make them more universal. If you wanted a special order a green or an orange or a red or a blue, you get the idea. We can order it for you. It's gonna take quite a while to get, but just know that option's available to you. All right, so that's a lot for you to take in, a lot to digest, but let's summarize it here. So the biggest of the big points, you're gonna have a 50% greater cut capacity with the Dirt Dog. You're gonna have a heavier, a thicker gauge steel deck on the Dirt Dog compared to the Frontier, a higher tip speed that probably allows you to get that higher uh, cut diameter, replaceable skid runners only found on the Dirt Dog, an improved deck design, that dome deck design, and it's ran across the top and welded underneath, so it's gonna help the longevity aspect of things. So warranty is also gonna be three times longer with that one year versus three year gearbox warranty. And maybe the biggest benefit of all this day and age, our Amazon Prime day and age, is the fact that we can ship right to your house. We sell and ship tractor attachments all across the country every day of the week. You gotta check us out. Give us a shot at goodworkstractors.com. So that is gonna wrap it up for us today. I do wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to have you hit subscribe right down below to follow along. 
And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.